Thanks everyone for joining us today. Good afternoon. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, we're going to learn a Rashi from the fifth Aliyah of the combined Parshio Samatos Mase. Um, in the fourth Aliyah, which is the bridge Aliyah, as it always is, the, the Aliyah that crosses over the Parshios from one to the other. Um, we learn about all the travels of B'nai Yisrael in the desert. That's the name of the second parsha. Elamase B'nai Yisrael Asher Yatu Meretz Mitzrayim Leti Wasam Biad Moshe Aaron. All the stops the Jewish people made, and uh, for a variety of reasons, all these stops are mentioned over here, uh, whether for the good or not so much for the good. Uh, but in the end, of course, all the stops lead to one place, which is the banks of the Yarden, where they are stationed right now, about to enter the land of Israel. So at the very end of this whole. A list of all the Vayisus, Vayisu, Vayisu, all of the travels of Bnei Israel. In the end, Vayachanu al Yarden mi Beit Hayashimot ad Avel Shitim Barvot Moab. They encamp on the banks of the Yarden at this place, uh, Be Arvos Moab, in the plains of Moab. And that's the place in which they're overlooking, so to speak, the land of Israel and getting ready to enter. And then Hashem says to Moshe, in that spot of Arvos Moab where they're camped, um, right next to the Jordan River, he says to give B'nai Israel the following structure. Speak to Jewish people and say to them, Tell them that they are supposed to cross the Jordan River to enter Canaan. And when they do so, They are supposed to conquer the land from all of its inhabitants. You should destroy all their places of worship, all the places of idolatry in the land. And Torah goes on to give more of the details of what that conquest will look like and how the land will be split up and how they move from the conquest stage to the actual inhabiting stage, etc. All of that is fulfilled in Sefer Yoshua. But Rashi uh, notices over here uh, the kind of redundancy of this instruction to destroy all of their uh, places of idolatry. We had that command many times in the Torah, many times in Sefer Tvarim. Why is it repeated over here? Why is it kind of tucked in here in the instruction about the crossing of the Yardane, which seems to be a new kind of instruction, an instruction very pertinent to this moment where they're finally encamped in the banks of the Yardane, and the very next thing Hashem needs to tell them before Moshe dies is, okay, now you should, you should cross the Yardane. So why does he include all these other details? So Rashi says over here, Kiatem Ovrim, Veho Rashtem, um, it's in order to actually connect these two psukim, the pasuk of crossing and the pasuk of the horashtem of conquering the land. Why? What's the connection between them? After all, we know about this from before. We're, we're warned many times about this. By juxtaposing these two topics, these two psukim, here's what really Hashem was telling Bnei Israel. When you're crossing the Yarden, you're on the land in the midst of that, of that river, of that uh, Jordan River, you should have in mind that the whole reason why you're crossing is Vehorashtem. The whole reason why you're crossing is to go in, to conquer the land, to settle the land, to inhabit the land, to get rid of idolatry in the land, to purify the land, and to make that land your own. That has to be your intention in crossing. And if it's not in your intention in crossing, then the miracle of the splitting of the Yarden will disappear and the waters will come and sweep you away. So the reason why these two psukim are juxtaposed is to tell us that the whole purpose of crossing has to be the horashtem. It's a very powerful Rashi, a very interesting Rashi. I think really broadly what, what this Rashi is saying is that Bnei Yisrael and going into the land had to have a very specific purpose for their entry. They had to have a very designated uh, kind of mission and ideal and goal for why they were going into the land. Otherwise, the waters would carry them away. And I don't think that only means the waters of the garden. I think it means, number one, the miracles that are supposed to be associated with the conquest of this land will disappear, just like the miracle of the splitting of the sea will disappear for you, because the whole purpose of you coming in is to have a partnership with Hashem to do all the things He said. And if you're not going to go in for that purpose, you're going to be in the land for another purpose to get lost somehow, and those miracles will fall away because the partnership falls away. In addition to the lat to that. The whole point of going in is to really have a very clear picture of what you want to get out of this land, because it's not an easy place to be. 
You'll be surrounded by foreign nations, foreign cultures, idolatry. You've been in this protective bubble in the Midbar all this time. Everything's been going fairly well for you, although you even had mistakes in the Midbar, in the bubble, close to Hashem and filled with miracles. Everything's going super well. Now you're going to a place that's very hard, very complicated. Physical life there is complicated. Spiritual life there is complicated. And if you don't have perfect focus, if you don't know exactly what you're supposed to get out of it, then by mind Vishotvin, then the waters, and I don't think it's only the waters of the Yadins, the waters of life will come and sweep you away. Your identity will be lost. Your whole connection to the land, to Hashem, will be lost. You'll be floundering. You'll be like every other people of the world. Something I think uh, which gives us a lot of pause for thought in terms of our own entry into the land. In modern times, in the state of Israel, what are we doing there? Why are we there? What's the character of the Jewish state which we are trying to create, trying to preserve? What does that mean about us? Do we have our eye on the prize? Do we know why we're there? Do we know what's different about us and what we what we want to strive to preserve in that land, which makes us different and distinct? And if we don't have that, then we could easily just be Maim Shotfin. We could have the waters come and sweep us away and become like every other nation of the world. And we're always in modern times kind of on the cusp of that and trying to straddle the line between how to be distinct, how to be different, how to be unique, and also how to be like every other country, every other nation of the world in terms of our functionality. And that's a hard place to be. And so far, it's a place we've been successful at navigating. Hopefully, we can continue to be successful at navigating that into the future as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Uh,